Hey guys and welcome to a special episode on the Hit Film channel. You may remember a while ago we did a guest episode on the Film Right channel for the heads up Hit Film 4 Express extravaganza. Ryan is here to return the favour. We're really lucky when we went over to VidCon earlier this year. We stopped by Dallas on the way back and we saw Ryan Connolly, Josh Connolly, Tim, all, all the Connollys. We had a lovely dinner and I'm quite the fanboy when it comes to Ryan so I tried to ask him what his motivation was behind Film Riot and the kind of thing he does. And he stopped me right there and he said, we're having dinner, Josh, just shut up. <laughs> I'll answer some questions, I'll send you a video. And here it is. How did you guys get started? I've been chasing filmmaking since I was about eight years old, although I didn't know that I was pursuing filmmaking until I was more like 11 or 12. Uh, but since that age, I was always making short films and trying to figure out how I would become a filmmaker. My dream was to become the first filmmaker to make a big feature at 18, which obviously <laughs> didn't happen. I went to film school around 20, 21 years old, and then after that I was able to get a job at Alienware running their video studio, which was really great because they hired me as a jack-of-all-trades type filmmaker, so I did everything uh, from all the pre-production work through post-production, including music, so I just did everything all on my own so I had my own studio where I was able to try whatever I wanted and learn things so if I wasn't on something specific that they had if there was any lull I was always trying new ideas new lighting ideas new techniques uh, and that was a really great training ground for me uh, then after that I got the idea to uh, start a filmmaking show that would kind of show how to with zero budget and hopefully progress with my career which is what Film Riot has finally become. It, it took about a year and a half of doing Film Riot full-time before I went full-time for my company and have been doing that ever since. Who influenced you the most? I think it's the collection of influence that makes up who you are as an artist, an entertainer, or whatever. Um, for me, obviously, I have that number one main influence of Steven Spielberg. He's definitely my biggest idol, hero, person that I've looked up to. It's definitely informed the way I approach filmmaking the most, but also Martin Scorsese, Quentin Tarantino, uh, Tony Scott, Ridley Scott, David Fincher, for sure. There's, there's a whole plethora of filmmakers that I love and look up to that have informed what I've become over time. It's not just one, but even outside of that into composers, writers, uh, it's the collection of all these things that I've loved and kind of have connected to in some way that has made up what I am. Even on Film Riot, Mythbusters was a huge influence. I mean, I don't know how much you can see it within Film Riot, but it, the way that they approached that show, their methodology, really informed what I wanted to do with Film Riot in a lot of ways. So I really think it's a collection of uh, everything that you connect with that influence you to become what you're ultimately going to become. Why do you do what you do? From a filmmaking standpoint, it's just because I couldn't not do it. There's no way that I could do anything else. I have to pursue filmmaking or I would just be incredibly depressed. It's why I say, you know, filmmaking is such a hard career to get into that if you're not so passionate that you wouldn't rather live under a bridge or out of your car, you should just do this as a hobby and get something else as your career um, because it really is a difficult thing to break into. But that really is how passionate I am about it. There really isn't a choice. I would be very, very depressed if I wasn't pursuing filmmaking from the Film Riot standpoint. I just really like helping people. Uh, it turns out I love educating and just helping to get info out there, but also the community that's been, it's been able to build where we put stuff out uh, for our community and they give us feedback. It's just been a really great experience. So at first it was kind of the, you know, wouldn't it be great to have a show like this? There really wasn't anything at the time that put info out all the time, but also, you know, followed someone's career from backyard zero budget filmmaking to hopefully eventually uh, big budget filmmaking, feature filmmaking. And uh, we're definitely on that track somewhere in the middle for sure, but it's it's been a great experience. And the thing that I learned was just how much I loved educating in that community. That That was something I found over time. So now why we keep doing it is for that reason. When we get kids coming back saying, hey, we're doing this film or I got this job or now I'm at this position and it's all thanks to Film Riot, that stuff uh, is why we keep doing it. It's just amazing and it's built a pretty incredible community. What's your favorite part of filmmaking? That's really hard to pick. I love filmmaking just as a whole. There isn't really a section of filmmaking that I don't like. I mean, other than the stress 
that it brings sometimes, obviously. But other than that, I really like every aspect of filmmaking. I love storytelling and you know giving that experience to an audience, and I love finding that, sort of getting this big block of wood that is your idea and starting to chip away from that until you get this you know refined sculpture that is that story or experience that you know that you now want to give to your audience. And then it's just in your mind, and now you have to pull it out and you have to explain it to the people who you're collaborating with to ultimately have on screen that thing that you whittled in your brain for other people to then experience the way you were hoping they would. So it's just that process as a whole, which really encompasses all of it from pre to post production. It's just that idea that I love so much. How do you come up with ideas? That's a really hard thing to answer. People ask that all the time and I don't really know exactly how to answer it because more often than not, it's just, I don't, I'm thinking and then an idea hits me. It just feels like sometimes that it comes out of nowhere. I think that it comes from your experiences, what you put in constantly, what you're reading, what you're listening to, what you're watching, just experiencing life, paying attention to your experience of life, sitting in a coffee shop and just hearing people talk and never taking anything for granted. Never let any piece of dialogue that someone lets fly out their mouth or moment that happens fly past you and just not be collected by your filmmaker net. Like just grab everything, put it in little boxes, so later you can pluck these things up, oh, you know, that's kind of an interesting idea. And I also just constantly come up with bad ideas. Just if I have a bad idea, I'm writing it down, uh, and I'm just pursuing that. Hey, here's a great feature idea, and I, I'll write it out as much as I can, do a terrible, terrible outline in like 20 minutes. But now I have that. And then I come up with another one, another one. And then by my fifth, I come up with a really solid story idea that I'm able to now pluck from all these other ideas that I had that were bad ideas as a whole, but had little gems inside of them to create this greater whole. And I think a lot of my fleshed out ideas come from that from always pursuing an idea, whether it's terrible or not, if I'm like, hey, this is kind of cool, just fleshing that out as much as I can, and then moving on until I have something that I know that this is gonna stick, this is something I want to work on, and then I just have all that catalog of bad ideas mixed with good ideas that I can then pull from. Who should we be subscribed to on YouTube? Well, Film Riot, hopefully, but then we also have another show called Variant, which is a comic book show that I dig a lot, uh, Cinematography Database, Filmmaker IQ, um, DIY Perks is another good one. Video Copilot has a great channel. Red Giant has a great channel. Corridor Digital has a great channel. Those guys are incredibly talented. There's just a ton of things online uh, on YouTube specifically that is great for filmmakers and just really entertaining stuff too. It would take a really long time for me to spit out all the ones that I love, but those are uh, some of my top picks for sure. What video are you most proud of and why? I would definitely say Proximity is the one that I'm most proud of, beyond the fact that it's just the short that I like the most of all the ones that we've made. Um, it was an example of us practicing what we preached. We had another much larger short film set up, uh, really big budget, it was almost 30 minutes long, but fell through last minute because of financing. And instead of us being depressed about it and letting that stop us, we decided to just make something else anyway. So we came up with a brand new idea, wrote and shot it in the matter of 10 days, and it did end up being one of my favorite short films we've ever made. So it's for all those things, and even just how we shot it, it was just a handful of us in the middle of nowhere with no money, just this 300 acre plot of land in the middle of nowhere, just going out and making this thing happen. We had no craft services. We had nowhere to go to the bathroom. We just went out and did it. And it was just the collection of all those things really make it uh, one of my most proud moments, I think. How do you keep good production value while working on a low budget? I think a lot of production value is wrapped up within the experience that you're giving your audience. Even if the production value isn't very high, but I am entirely engaged and you're giving me this great experience, I'm going to forgive all of that as long as the sound isn't bad. Sound being bad is really the one thing that can absolutely ruin a project, so I'm always preaching that. The sound has to be good, but everything else, including visual effects, can be a little less if you know you can't get them there if you were giving your audience that experience that they need to give. So above all else, that's the value that needs to be had uh, within your production. But beyond that, it's about locations. Good locations are gonna help boost that production value and that can be something that you can get for free. Just ask around and find a good location that somebody might just be willing to let you use. Stock footage is a really great way to boost production value. If you just cut away to a city shot, that makes it feel a lot bigger. Even the music, getting good music, that's gonna boost the production value. Getting music that sounds very indie, very made by someone who's not quite ready to make that sort of music, 
definitely will hurt you. So it's a matter of finding these little tricks that are gonna make everything feel a lot bigger than what it actually is. What do new filmmakers tend to get wrong? I would say out of all the videos that are sent to me, the number one bit of feedback I'm giving is the pacing's off. I almost say that with every video that's shown to me. Usually the pacing is very slow. It needs to be picked up a lot. People think that, you know, maybe their audience aren't going to be able to keep up with what they're trying to say, or they have shots that they really love how they look and they want them to linger, or they just want a piece that is longer so it feels bigger. None of that is helpful. There has been shots that I love the most out of every shot we got for a project, but then threw it on the editing room floor. It didn't even make it into the final production because it slowed down the pacing. You have to, as they say, kill your babies. Don't be precious about anything. Don't be married to anything. It's all about giving your audience the experience that you're trying to give them and pacing is one of the number one things for that. So if your pacing is slow, you're going to bore your audience and that really is the cardinal sin in filmmaking. What's coming up for Film Riot? Well, we have a Bloodtober event coming up with two small pieces that we're going to be putting out, which I'm very excited about. We're going to have a lot of BTS. It's going to be very cool, but we're also ramping up to do much bigger things next year. Something specific that we can't talk about yet because there's nothing set in stone, so it'd be pointless to talk about, but it's all hopefully bigger and better. We're working toward getting the show back consistent uh, of how we want it to be on a weekly basis. And on top of that, just doing much bigger things, much bigger gear, much bigger production, so we can really bring this pretty much free online film school to our audience. If you could choose to work with anyone in the industry, who would it be? Definitely Steven Spielberg. That man is a genius, and that would that I could die happy if that happened. We really hope you enjoyed that, guys. Do go over to the Film Riot channel and subscribe if you haven't already. It's pretty much the best resource on YouTube for learning about filmmaking, apart from apart from apart from us. Yeah. But other than that, it's the best. I mean, you don't have to choose. You can subscribe to both. Yes. And make both of us happy. And Ryan's a really nice guy. You do want to make him happy, don't you?